I've been in Hollywood for a number of years and worked on a lot of films that are now referred to as legendary. I'm going to tell you a few stories in a segment they've called Looking Uphill. Bullet, uh, I worked on not particularly in a creative capacity. I was the second assistant director. We started shooting in February of 1968, but everybody wants to talk about the chases. I can't tell you how many times I had to dive and grab people from getting in the way of the shot because we were on the city streets. It was uh, incredibly risky now that I think about it. Uh, thank God nothing went wrong. And of course, the, the chase became uh, one of the great legends of Hollywood. May well be the best chase anybody's ever done. That and the French connection, I would think. Warriors come out to play. The film was made under very difficult circumstances, uh, on the street at night, very fast setups. So it was a little difficult for, I think, the cast to put their hands around some kind of social reality. That doesn't mean that it didn't have social relevance. I think the, the gang situation, the survival situation, the street situation of New York at that time did have a lot of bearing on the film. Now when you look at it, it looks more like a musical than some terrifically violent piece of work. Alien. Well, we insisted that one, it have a female lead, and two, that the female be the female lead be an unknown actor. We thought that if, if anything killed science fiction movies, it was the idea that a movie star was in the movie, and therefore you knew the movie star was always going to survive in the end, and we felt the Jeopardy was everything. The, the film was beautifully cast by Mary Goldberg, and she was the one that suggested Sigourney. I usually get credit for finding Sigourney, but it was really Mary. Well, The Long Riders was my first Western. During the Northfield raid, one of the horses actually did go through a window. It's been done a couple of times in the other films. I wanted to do it, and I wanted to do it in a rather more spectacular way, I hope. It mainly involved tricking the horses. For a couple of days, they would just take the horses and walk them through the open window until out, out the back, so they knew it was safe ground. Then we put uh, safety glass in, and we knew that we'd probably only get a couple, we were running out of time, and we would only get a few shots at it. And I heated everybody up and said, look, this is, this is gonna be it, you know, so it better goddamn go well. It, <laughs> what can I tell you? It turned out to be a hell of a shot and uh, a hell of a sequence. Listen, we ain't got no deal. I own your ass. Ain't no goddamn way to start a partnership. 48 Hours uh, came together uh, rather slowly. Uh, Larry Gordon, the producer, thought that Paramount would make the movie with Nick Nolte, who was very reluctant to do the movie. He didn't like the idea of playing a cop. Oh, no, I'm not a cop, God damn it. You know. My girlfriend at the time was a theatrical agent. She represented Eddie Murphy. Eddie was not the first comedic talent to come out of Saturday Night Live and become a great star. But what 48 Hours, I think, did was it, it didn't break him in a comedy, a, a straight comedy. Can heard of him now, man? And that gave him a rather different angle on his career than some of the other people that had come out of that, that background. Hello, Frank. You can call me the doctor. We got Michelle Rodriguez and Sigourney Weaver. You know, I've known Sigourney a long time. We're, we're, we've stayed good friends. I said to her, this is different for you than, uh, you may not want to speak to me again, or you may love it, but it's a, it's a hell of a part. I thought that she would make the part more sympathetic. And I wanted the audience to feel a kind of empathy for them by the end of the movie. And I thought as soon as you got into the mad doctor trope, with a guy, you know, it just felt like you'd seen it so many times. It's one of the reasons that I switched uh, Sigourney's part to a woman. It was, it was originally written for a man. The assignment is available on demand now and in select theaters April 7th. You can check out the graphic novel and maybe buy it. Thank you. <laughs>